evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, I I want to thank you for allowing me to preach, man. I uh, wasn't sure if you were going to ask me to, but I'm glad they did. Last time, or last Sunday, rather, I I was asked to preach. I talked about perspective, and tonight's message will be a sort of spiritual successor to that. So, along the same theme. Our, our main text, when we get to it, will be Romans 8.28 tonight. Our, our text is a very popular, well-known verse. We actually have a song of it. It's, it's not a super complex song, it's just the words of the text, but still. Uh, so I'll read it now, it's Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good, to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Paul, in, in this chapter of Romans, he's been describing the life of Christians on this side of heaven as one of groaning. We long to escape the suffering of this life and to be with our Father God in person. We wait in the sure hope of the day our bodies will be resurrected and we will share in God's glory. But what about all the hard things that come to pass while we're waiting for their glory? Paul seems to offer the promise of this verse as a comfort for us. What is that promise? That for those who are saved, all things will indeed work together for good. All things should be taken to mean each and every circumstance one might experience, even pain or suffering. God is the one who causes all things to work together or perhaps works through all things to accomplish toward an end, a specific end. And what is that end? Well, we, as we read in our, our verse, that end is good. The comfort of this verse is that nothing in this life of waiting and suffering is wasted is all meaningful for those in Christ, even if that doesn't diminish our pain in the moment. Last time I preached, I opened with a, a story I made up about a woman named Shannon. I, I wasn't trying to call anybody out, so I tried to pick a name that I couldn't think of too many people having. But right after I, I finished telling the story, I, my mind was flooded with people that I met who were named Shannon. <laughs> so I, I apologize for calling anybody out. To avoid this, I'm just gonna use myself as an example tonight. <laughs> Now, this is a, a story that I, I don't really like sharing. It's, it's kind of embarrassing. Uh, but I'll, I'll power through. So, I was a junior in college at Maryville in St. Louis. And I struggled in a couple of classes. It's just didn't have the energy to do it because of my disease, free exactly. Yeah. 
And my my brother told me he he persevered. So really, hats off to him for for overcoming that huge hurdle in this way. It's really incredible. It's really impressive. But I I digress. I was forced to drop out of Maryville. And this was really hard for me because I, I loved it so much. Um, it was a really difficult time for me in this period. I, I was really angry and really depressed. I thought the whole thing was really unfair. I, I again, I loved it so much. The, the people I met, the things I got to do, the the freedom that I had there. I was super bummed out because I was forced to drop out. But even though this was really tough on me, it was ultimately worth it. I needed to go to Mayerville for three years in order to deepen my relationship with Christ. And I needed to leave when I did, no matter how much shame that I felt, to continue my Christian journey all the more. Now I'm taking seminary courses and I've never really thrived in school like I am now. In, in school that matters at least. I'm sure that I got straight A's in kindergarten, but it doesn't mean that. <laughs> I, I needed to go through this, and in the end, this all worked together for good, as our, our text says, like our text says. Even this dark chapter in my life, It reminds me of the text that I read last last Sunday that I was asked to preach. Um, the 19th of June, I think. Yeah. It reminds me of that text, which is 1 Corinthians 13, 9-12, where it says, For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, for then shall I know even as I also am known. Until Jesus returns, which is when that which is perfect is come, that's what it's talking about there, when Jesus comes back. Until then, we won't have the proper perspective to see the whole picture. Now we only know a part, but soon we will know fully. This thing that I thought was bad might have actually been good and might have been great for me. I, I heard this really interesting Chinese proverb uh, that applies to what we're talking about tonight. It goes like this. There was a, a farmer. He, he had this horse on his farm. It was really quick and strong and it was helpful. One day that horse ran away. And then that night all of his neighbors came around to comfort him. They said, 
Oh, we're so sorry to hear that this happened to you. This really sucks for you and your work. And the farmer said, well, maybe. The next day, that horse actually came back and bring along with it seven new wild horses. That night, the people in the town came back and they said, Oh, isn't that lucky? What a great turn of events. You thought you'd lost one horse and now you have eight new ones. And the farmer again said, well, maybe. The next day, the farmer and his son were trying to break in the new horses. They were trying to tame them. While well, riding one, the son was thrown off and he broke his leg. So this was a pretty busy week for on the farm. Again, the neighbors came to the farmer and said, Oh man, that's too bad. And the farmer again responded, well maybe. The next day, the country of the village was in went to war. The officers came around to conscript the able-bodied young men and women into the army. They were forced to reject the farmer's son because he had a broken leg. Once again, all the neighbors came around and said, Oh man, what a blessing. Your son doesn't have to go away. And the farmer, he said, well, maybe. And of course, the, the point of this proverb is that we don't have the perspective necessary to know the results of something that happens to us in the moment. The whole process of nature is an integrated process of immense complexity. It's really impossible to tell whether anything that happens in it is good or bad. You never know what the consequence of misfortune will be or the consequence of good fortune. We're quick to label certain situations bad if we dislike it and good if we like it. But binary thinking doesn't always serve us well. We see this binary thinking running amok in our culture today. We have factions choosing sides and equally dam damaging is jumping to quick, sometimes too quick, conclusions about the impacts or benefits of certain situations. You fail a class, uh, a key cohort quits, one of your good friends moves across the country. Your computer stops working. A parent has an accident where they need to go on home. A death in the family occurs. COVID happens. Is it good? Is it bad? Maybe. One thing is for sure, that life is uncertain. We never really know what situations may yield us. Good, bad, or otherwise. Whatever happens in our life, we'll never be sure of the consequences that it may bring in the future. Now, and you're, you'll see why I was smiling there. Now it would make me sound like uh, a real intellectual. It's 
to say that I stumbled across the story on my own. Maybe it was in one of the various, various novels that I read. Um, perhaps while sucking on a cool cop pipe or in one of many TED Talks that I listen to every day. But the truth is that I heard the story from the NFL player Tom Brady. I, I heard this from him. His point of this story had to do with being motivated by the bad stuff in his career because maybe it's for the best. Of course, things will happen in everybody's life. Good, bad, or in between. Whatever it is, we aren't able to see the final outcome. We don't have the proper perspective to see it all. And we won't until Christ returns as I said last time. But, as Christians, this doesn't mean that we should fret. Just because we lack the perspective, because we are sure, in our, our text tonight, as I read, we're sure that all things will work together for good if we love God. If we revere God, if we communicate with God, if we listen to God, if God is the source of our affection, we don't need to say maybe. Our God is one that keeps his promises. And we have promised that all things will work for us. To return to talking about myself, I was forced to drop out of Maryville, and that was really hard. But because of my love for and faith in God, as well as His guidance, it all worked out in the end. And it will for those who love God. Now, uh, I'll last your sermon, but I am there. But there's a kind of addendum attached to this, this promise. The promise is limited to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. In short, that means, sorry, I had a typo there. In short, that means the promise is for Christian, for saved believers who place their trust in Jesus Christ. No matter our feelings on a given day, loving God is part of what it means to live in Christ. It's, it, it's who we are if we love Christ and love God. Each of us is also called to fulfill God's purposes. In other words, this verse cannot rightly be applied to non-Christians. I'm, I'm sure many people have tattoos of, of the first part of this verse, but that's not where it ends. Those who reject God do not, 
express the love for God by coming to him through faith in Jesus. For those who die without Christ, things will not have worked out for the better. They will have rejected the opportunity to take advantage of this promise. John 3.36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. As lovers of Christ, we have no need to say maybe. If we, if we truly love Christ and live for him, we are assured that all things will work together for good. 